Hey, it's Freiberger. I'm standing here at the drag strip after having run out of gas with the crop duster at the very last minute, and I'm waiting for somebody to bring fuel so that we can run again. That's the type of thing that you end up seeing on Roadkill Extra, which is the daily show on Motor Trend On Demand, where we show you behind the scenes of Roadkill and Roadkill Garage, and we do question and answer sessions, tech tips, stuff like that. It airs every weekday on Motor Trend On Demand. A lot of people needed a taste of it though. They wanted to find out what it's all about. So we're going to put one right here on YouTube so you can kind of see what Roadkill Extra is all about. And hopefully you'll go sign up for our 30 day free trial and hopefully you'll subscribe to Motor Trend On Demand to support all of this because I have no race budget without you. So here you go. Check out the most popular episode of Roadkill Extra that we've had on Motor Trend On Demand so far. This is gonna be a behind the scenes look at the twisted collection of Steve Dulcich, who's my co-host both on Roadkill Garage and also on Engine Masters. Now I would have Dulcich here himself telling you about this stuff, but he would deny most of what I'm about to tell you because the guy, he's like, am I really a Mopar guy? It's like, dude, you have Dodges stacked up like cordwood in your equipment yard here. And in particular, I'm gonna tell you about his fetish for these 70s Dodge trucks. This is a D100 that you'll probably recognize because we had this in an episode of Roadkill Garage. It was a truck that he bought just for parts because I guess it, it's not that it was been trashed, it's more that it had registration nightmares and it owed so much money to the DMV that there was no way he was ever going to register it so it became a parts truck. We think this one is a 75, and it was sitting around after he sort of harvested some junk off of it, but it had an engine in it, and if you flash back to my favorite episode of Roadkill Garage so far, you will see us putting that engine into a 70 Dodge Challenger, but in the episode before that, we made this truck run and drive with a clapped out 360 small block Mopar and a 727 automatic transmission, and we went and thrashed the thing in the field just because we knew that we were actually going to take this drive train and throw it in that Challenger. This truck is actually kind of good because it's a 75, which in California is smog exempt. That's kind of the magic number for us in California is, ooh, 75 and older. Whenever I go on Craigslist, I go on the thing that lets you choose model year, and I just look at all the junk that is smog exempt because I don't even want to deal with that. But this truck is a short bed, which makes it pretty good because he needed a bed. Let's ask why. Check out this truck over here. This is one that Dulcich had as a daily driver for a long time. And unfortunately, he got sideswiped by somebody. I think he said it was like in a Taurus or something. And they mangled the bed and they took out the whole front end of the thing, which is a real drag because this was a nice truck. He had the thing like all reupholstered. The rats have eaten all of that. Look, there's actual rat poop there. You can see he had his tack in there. I like these 70s Dodge trucks too because in my experience they have a ton more leg room than the Fords and Chevys of the same era. That's what makes them good. What makes them bad is that it's really hard to find parts for them, which is why he's got these things all stacked around. Look, here's a hood for one. This is kind of interesting. This color is like very close to hemi orange, sort of on the Go Mango side. It's a little like a muscle car color, but they used it on the like Caltrans trucks. I think it's Omaha orange. And I had a whole Dodge Ram charge of this color once. But see, he's got, I think this is a 408 small block. Maybe it's a 340 in this thing. He used to tell me this thing would run 7,000 RPM, which doesn't sound like a good idea for a big truck to me, but he really liked this truck until it got wiped out. And that's why he bought that black one because uh, the front clip needed to go on this and so did the bed. But wait, there's more. You walk over here and you've got a slightly later one. The grill on this one indicates that it's like, a, I'm not really, really good on this, but it's not a 72, three, four, or five. So it's like a 76 and up that has these marker lights in it. And this one, I can tell by looking at the shape of the transmission bell housing bolt pattern, had a slant six in it, which is that Chrysler inline six cylinder engine that's actually leaned over at an angle like this. It's kind of a funky motor. I like this truck because it's a manual transmission and it's got no power brakes, which is, you know, kind of a thing for me. No power steering. 
uh, but it does have discs on it. And most importantly, it's a step side, which personally I kind of favor on these trucks. I think that it's pretty good. These things have the same wheel bolt pattern as a Chrysler muscle car too. It's kind of like a muscle car just in the shape of a pickup truck. This isn't the only one though. Let's go see more. The Ram Charger right here sort of falls out of the formula of the early 70s Dodge trucks, but it's kind of the same thing. This is the more squared off body style with the non-removable top. When they went into, I'm gonna guess, let me think, 83 or four-ish, they went to the non-removable top like that. I'm probably wrong on that year, but the later ones, the top didn't come off, which is kind of a drag. But up here, there's some even better stuff. See, right now, Dulcich be saying things like, you know, I don't really hoard these things, and I'm actually going to get the thing running soon. And, oh, man, you can't say that this truck is junk because it's really good. He'd be saying things like that. So over here is the truck that he's working on currently. This is my favorite one so far. Actually, I think I said that one was my favorite one. This one is better because this one uh, is about to run and drive. It has a 318 in it. If I can remember how to open these things. It's been a long time since I owned one of these myself. Let's see. Secondary latch, there it is. Okay, so that's got a bone stock 318 in it. And you'll notice he's added uh, aftermarket air conditioning compressor to it because he likes his air. It's all freshly rewired. Once again, manual brake truck. It does have power steering. This thing is all that original sort of bronze color. Look how nice the interior is though. I'm about to kill the camera guy falling into the ditch there. Look at that. All fresh. It's got an 833 overdrive four-speed in it, which is an interesting transmission that Mopar used in the mid-70s to early 80s. It's just like the 833 Hemi four-speed that they ran in, actually not a Hemi four-speed, but like a muscle car four-speed that would be in a 383 Dart or a 340 Duster, except for that third gear is overdrive and fourth gear is one-to-one. -one. So the, you flip over one of the levers on the shifter. So you're doing a normal H pattern to shift, but you're really going first, second, fourth, third. I don't know why that's the way it is, but third is in fact the overdrive ratio. So when you're driving it, it seems like fourth. But this is a really nice truck. And once again, a short bed step side. But that's not the only one. Come over here. Yet another one. This truck, you can actually see in an episode of Roadkill. I forget which one. There's a scene of Dulcich and I driving in this thing in a Roadkill, and I really don't remember which one it was. This used to be a daily driver for him. I remember when we used to haul parts around in this thing. And uh, my favorite part of this one is the 15 by 10 dish mags all the way around. That makes this one swank. I bet he'd trade this one to me for something. That's kind of my thought. Let's see, are there any more? I think there is. There's one more that's a farm truck. There it is. Oh, but this one's the earlier body style. This is a 1970, I believe, Dodge truck. He doesn't have as much of a kink for these things as he does the earlier ones. They changed the body style on these in 71. Is that right? Or was it 72 that they went to the newer body style? One or the other. I should know these things off the top of my head. But that's what you get when you come to these videos on Motor Trend On Demand, where we're just trying to give you more content, sort of off the top of our head, giving you a behind the scenes look at the twisted worlds of, in this case, Roadkill Garage. But check it out. We have a whole bunch more videos here on Motor Trend On Demand, not just the full length shows that we do, but more and more of this behind the scenes stuff. Stay tuned for that and come back as often as you can to Motor Trend On Demand.